Hi guys! So today I'm going to speak to you about um, two things. The first thing is I've been looking and looking and looking for a tip calculator. So we are, as you know, going to Disney World. The first time we're going to be vlogging Disney World this September and I've been doing the final planning stages of trying to work out spending money and tip money and things like that and I'd looked around everywhere and I cannot find a tip calculator so by a tip calculator what I mean is tips or gratuities um, I hope I said that right <laughs> if you are British like me we don't always tip so we tip when we think someone's giving an exceptional service or if it's a particularly good restaurant or a high-end hotel, but it's you don't tip everybody in the UK, it's exceptional. Whereas when you go to the US, um, it is accepted that you tip basically everybody. Um, there's a few exceptions, but I'll do a separate video on that if you would like to know more. Even though we're on the Disney dining plan, we do have to have money for tips or gratuities, like I said. And so I wanted to know how much do we need. So I'd looked online and I could see calculations to see if the Disney dining plan was worth it for you, um, how much the credits were if you were to pay out of pocket, but I could not find one that would tell me how much my tips are. So I decided to make my own spreadsheet to work that out for me. What I started to do was I put down the number of days that we were going to Disney and the dates that we were going on those so that I could correlate that to my plan. And I worked out um, the cost of the meals. So if we were to go in there, what we were most likely to order. Um, if For my other half, I'm never quite sure what he'll order because his taste changes so much. So I just ordered the most expensive thing on the menu for him. And I, or I looked as if I would order what I would plan to order if I went to the restaurant. So that told me how much our individual meals would be. And then what I did is I built in the formula to take in the 18% and then 20% tip. Now, just because it is 18 or 20% doesn't mean you can't tip more if you really, really have a good experience or a good service. But 18% is sort of the minimum acceptable level that you can tip. A little bit of advice for you is that if you have a party of six or more, you will automatically have the tip put onto your bill. Just be aware of that. Now, so like I said, I've added 18% tip on one column and a 20% tip in the other column. What I've also done is in the top right hand side is I put the exchange rate. Um, again, as I'm British, it's GBP into USD or USD into GBP, depending on the column. So at the very bottom, I put what the totals were of all of the tips for the for the whole of the holiday and also then converted that into pounds so I have a rough idea of how much I'm going to need for my tips for our trip I also just because I was interested put a total of what all of our just main table service meals were going to come to for the entire trip and it came up to n over 900 pounds which is really really good considering we did free dining and then we just upgraded a little bit so really, really super, super pleased with that. Now that's that's the end of my spreadsheet idea. So the next bit that what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about what I'm really excited to try at Disney World. So I've broken it down into sections. So the first thing is breakfast. Now we have only booked to go to one restaurant for breakfast and that is Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest, obviously it's the setting, they do the really, really good breakfast. I'm hoping to have the gas feast a la Gaston, or Gaston's breakfast. Um, it comes with um, pastries and fruit, as well as obviously the the, the meat, the eggs, and, and all that. Um, it's really, really good value because it's quite expensive if you were to pay out of pocket, and it's also right in the park, which means we can head on to, let's say, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train or something um, as soon as we finish the reservation. So we've booked there all the rest of the breakfast we will either use a snack credit quick service credit or possibly something that we buy from Walmart so just to give you an idea we're not really going to be using our table service credits for our breakfast just because it just doesn't stack up when you when you're looking at the value side and when you're thinking of what you can get for um, table service for a dinner versus what you can get for a breakfast so the next thing I'm going to go to is the snacks 
So to start off with, sorry this is my handy little notepad here so that I can tell you. So the first thing is um, I'm really excited to try our drinks. So we have the strawberry acai or the beet berry refresher. Both are from Starbucks and you can get them from multiple Starbucks locations throughout Disney World. So because it's hot, my brain doesn't seem to like to get over the fact that you can still drink hot drinks in a hot climate. So I really like something cool and refreshing. The second drink item is Night Blossom, which you get over in Animal Kingdom at Pongu Pongu. So I'm really excited to try that. Not only is it great for Instagram, but it's supposed to taste amazing. And those boba balls in the top, well, just bliss, I think. Um, while we're talking about um, Pandora area, the cheeseburger pods. Now, these used to be at Satuli Canteen as part of an adult meal. They aren't on there anymore, but I have been told that you can order two of the cheeseburger pods as a snack credit. So I'll be aiming to do that. Um, the next thing I'm really excited to try is edible cookie dough. Now this started off being in the All Star Resorts, but now you can also get it at Arista Crepes in Disney Springs, which I'm super excited about. I do love cookie dough and the idea that you can have edible cookie dough, I mean, what's not to love? Main Street Bakery, that used to be run by Disney and was taken over by Starbucks, so for some time they didn't have the speciality cupcakes. But I've got great, great news for you Disney fans, the cupcakes are back. So they do speciality cupcakes which are done by um, season. So they've done a, an amazing Halloween cupcake which is basically a candy apple, a poisoned apple similar to Snow White. They've done a Cinderella's Castle cupcake. They've done so, so many amazing cupcakes um, that are just amazing to look at and taste great too. The Caramel Turtle Brownie, that can be found at Sunshine Seasons in Epcot. I'm really looking forward to trying that. I've been told that the Butterfinger Cupcake in Hollywood Studios is an absolute must. So I can't remember which shop that is in over there um, or which restaurant, but I would definitely be trying the Butterfinger Cupcake. It used to be in Starring Rolls, but obviously that doesn't exist anymore. Now, if you like a little bit of a break from the parks, I've got a great one for you. So in the Dolphin Resort, there is a shop called Fuel, a frozen yogurt bar. So they have six flavours that they seem to interchange and loads of different toppings that you can put on. Now, as I said, you, you, it is close to Epcot and Hollywood Studio, Studios in a walkable distance. Get out of the park, have a break, especially with Star Wars opening. This will be a really good rest stop for you. Now, the next one is not going to be a surprise to you guys. So this is a Magic Kingdom snack. If I had to give you a guess, I bet you would get it in one. A doll Whip. Never tried a Dole Whip. I don't particularly like pineapple, but I've got to try this, guys. It is a notorious snack. So, Again, I did mention I like peanut butter, maybe just a tad. Over in the Contempo Cafe, they do a peanut butter pie. That I just can't wait for. Anything with peanut butter, I'm completely up for. Next thing is cinnamon bun from Gaston, Gaston's Tavern. Now, this will be a really, really good breakfast. If you're someone that likes to eat something in the morning, you don't particularly want something massive, this would be great to share. If you are particularly hungry, you could get this all for yourself. Over in Animal Kingdom, we have the pulled pork and cheese fries from Frame Tree Barbecue. So, if you're wanting something for lunch, you, but you've got a really, really good um, table service later on, this will be a really good thing just to, to keep you topped up, keep those energy levels good, and also have a little bit of a sit down with some fans. So Flame Tree Barbecue's fries, they do lots of different versions of them, which is great. Next thing is over at Hollywood Studios in Oasis Canteen. It is the strawberries and ice cream funnel cake. So this is huge. Um, on Disney Food, Food Blog, I think they said it was $8.99, and for a snack credit, you are on to a winner. The last snack um, is the Zebra Domes 
from the Mara in Animal Kingdom Lodge. Now, they just look amazing. They look like they've got an amazing texture and I just can't wait to try them. There's lots and lots of things that I can't wait to try at Disney World, but this was just a few of the things that I had off the top of my head that I thought I would share with you. Now, the next item on the list is quick service. So I'm really excited to eat a Blaze pizza. Me and Paul love pizza and the idea that you can either create your own or take inspiration for what's already there. Um, also the atmosphere of Disney Springs. I mean, they don't have queues outside for nothing, right? Another Disney Springs location is Chicken Guy. Now Paul is a major fan of KFC and I've been told if you like KFC you're going to love Chicken Guy. Now Disney in Detail, which is another um, vlogger that I watch, I doubt Victoria would ever watch my videos, but hi Victoria if you somehow happen to be watching this. Um, she has some great, great videos, great advice and tips and tricks and um, her and her friend went to Chicken Guy on their last and thankfully for all of us viewers they did try quite a lot of things on the menu for us and I must say that video sold it to me Victoria, I'm going to be going. The next thing on the list is Be Our Guest. Now, be our guest, you can go there for breakfast, you can go there for lunch, and you can go there for dinner. Breakfast and lunch is a quick service, dinner it is a two credit signature or table service. So we opted to go for breakfast on one day and quick service on another day. Lots of different options, I quite like the idea of the croque monsieur. Um, Paul will probably have a steak or some sort of meat because he really loves that. And I would like to try the grey stuff. Um, all the Masters Cupcake. I love both of them. I might convince Paul for us to go half and half and then we get to try them. Yak and Yeti is the next thing on the list. So this is the quick service. They do the Kobe beef cheeseburger or hot dog with fries. Now this looks really, really good, really filling. Again, a good sized portion for us UK goers. Next thing is in Flame Chew Barbecue. So this is a quick service check credit, the barbecue chicken. The portions are really, really good and the seasoning is good. If you love barbecue food, Flame Chew Barbecue looks like a great place to go. The very last thing on my list is the Yorkshire County Fish and Chip Shop. Now this was one place that we did eat at in 2013 and it was amazing. It's the iconic British Fish and Chips in Disney World. Absolutely love it. Um, we will definitely be having that again. Now last but by no means least are the table service restaurants we're excited to go to. So the first one is Ohana. Now any budding vlogger like myself will have watched 10 million thousand other YouTubers going to see Ohana. The amazing way that it's served, the pot stickers, the different meats, noodles, the veg, but as you've probably guessed from everything else on this video, but that bread and butter pudding, oh my goodness, that looks stunning. The next thing is California Grill. Now not only is there an epic view from the top of the world bar or the balcony of the Magic Kingdom fireworks, the food is impeccable. Um, absolutely, there's so many different things, I don't know how I'm going to choose what I eat, but you will see what I choose. Next thing is the Yachtsman. Now, Paul and I love a good steak, and I have been told by numerous people the Yachtsman at the Yacht Club do the best steaks on Disney property. I will let you know what, what I think of it. The next one, I have heard the food isn't all that great, but who can, change, who can better that location? Cinderella's Royal Table, dining in the castle itself. I just can't wait. It's the experience. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to think about meeting characters, but these characters are princesses. This one is Sci-Fi Dine. So I picked Sci-Fi Dine for Paul. So Paul loves 
cars, he loves anything like that. It's a little bit of fun sitting in the vehicles, eating your dinner um, and watching some clips. I think that's really, he's really, really going to love that and it's a good break also in Hollywood Studios. The very last thing is Toledo. Now if you don't know, Toledo is the new restaurant that is at the top of the Grandestino Tower in Coronado Springs. You are supposed to be able to see fireworks from all four Disney parks there. So I planned very carefully when I booked my reservation. It's also the resort that is gonna be our home for this stay. So I'm super, super excited. So much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate you joining me on my journey to plan my trip and also obviously to come along for, for the video for our trip. Now, if you've got anything you'd like to recommend, be it drinks, snacks, quick service or table service, because we do have one table service credit left, please let me know in the, in the box below and I will, of course, try that. 